Hello, it's Joe Drexler, once again, uh, founder of Be The Game and the Kind Every Time movement and school programs, including now minor sports. I'm sitting here with a lovely young lady. It's Saturday, March the 8th, and uh, we're going to conduct another interview for our, um, for our documentary, uh, Behind Closed Doors. Um, so let's just start off. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Good. Good. Hey, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, I'm Jessica. Uh, Jessica? Well, Jess. Jess, and, yes. Uh, I'm 19 years old. Okay. And... Um, I would. Uh, I just want. I just want to share my story because I feel like it. It does need to be heard, and um, I feel like it can help people, even if it just helps one person. I love that, and we talked off camera beforehand, uh, and uh, your story is is one that uh, nobody should ever have gone through, especially for what it was. Yeah. So why don't we start off? Um, when did it first start happening? The bullying. Um. Well, I honestly, it started all through. Um, way back in kindergarten. Um, yeah. my, one of my first memories of kindergarten, uh, I don't re exactly remember what kids were saying, but I just remember um, a circle of kids just around me and um, calling me names, especially because uh, my nose, I guess it was hard for children to take to it. Um, I have a benign uh, tumor in my nose. It's a strawberry hemangiona. Okay. Um, the size and the color has gone down tremendously. Um, two nose surgeries and 350 laser procedures later. It's. Can you say that one more time, just so they understand <laughs> that? How many? Uh, two nose surgeries and 350 laser procedures. Wow. Yeah. And um, so now that that's all gone, finally, I guess, uh, people people don't come to notice it as much. But when I did uh, go into high school, people did notice the size of my nose. And I just, um, biggest memories is just hearing Snickers behind my back of um, hearing every type of name in the book, uh, pretty much. And um, wow. it also just... Uh, just being in high school and just not being the favorite of everyone's, you know, um, yeah. being, being blamed for certain things that would happen at school or, um, Wait, is, that, is that because you were, you were the easy target? I guess so. I guess because I wasn't, um, I wasn't the same as everyone. I didn't conform to what the whole thing about, yeah. uh, because I believe that, you know, um, especially with STN and the uniforms, it just makes all conformity. Everyone looks the same. Everyone yep. has to be the same. And um, just being threatened also by uh, by people in older grades, being uh, having death threats, being told I want, people wanted me dead. And Unreal. People telling me that they wanted to kill me and, you know, just right in the hall of, of the school. And I just, uh, I really wish that there was a program like this for when I was a kid uh, growing up because... You know, at least if somebody wasn't there for me, I would have at least had this program, you know? Yeah. And um, I just wish that there was somebody there for me. Yeah. And um, being brought up uh, as bullied as I was, um, it gave me a tough skin, but it also made me not the nicest person. And um, That's that's really um, honest of you to say. Yeah. And uh, it made it difficult for me to... Um, relax my anger and to uh, remain calm when people would do things to me. Um, if someone said something to me in the hall or, you know, uh, shoved me or something, I would just, I would absolutely lose it to the point where I would almost get physical with students because I just, I was at my breaking point. Yeah. And um, after grade 11, I uh, switched schools to go to Blake Lock. Yeah. And um, I just, I don't, I don't think of it as uh, running away. I think of it as just doing, I tried to make uh, my experience at STA as good as possible, but um, it just wasn't cutting it anymore. So I just, uh, I felt like I had to make my situation better and um, not by running away, but just by changing the scenery of things. And yeah. um, I had a great experience at Blake Lock, you know, and um, if there's one thing that I could say to every kid is that high school is is not the whole world you are going to make it and there is a whole life outside of there and that you know someone might make your life a living hell in high school but they are they are not going to be any factor of your life when you're out of there and i tried taking my i tried taking my own life in the in the 8th grade and um, just as i was about to do it my my parents came home and i snapped out of it and i realized that this uh, i'm not going like this and I'm not going this young, and I'm going to make my life as beautiful as I can, and um, because I deserve it. Yeah. Everyone deserves it, even even if you are a bully. You know, you you deserve to stop being a bully, and you deserve to have a nice life. And. Um, 
that you just what what you just said there Jess shows so much about the character that you possess and carry it shows so much about how much you care yeah. for you to say even the bullies deserve it deserve happiness and deserve a good life yeah. that is powerful because they sometimes lack that person yeah. who believes in them and that's what we're hoping to um, establish here is yeah. that is that belief system right yeah. and your story what you went through when we were talking off camera I want to rewind a little bit here yeah. you were talking about how you had um, we don't need to mention names but you had a friend um, who was your confidant yeah in grade nine and unfortunately he passed away yeah. in, a, in a very unfortunate accident um, and that was your support yeah. How do you? How did? What, what happened then? How did you deal with that? Did that set you back? Uh yeah, it set me back a lot, and um, that's when, because uh, I had been going therapy uh, from sixth to about the tenth grade, and when that happened, and it was the summer going into the ninth, into the ninth grade, and um, probably went to my therapist more times that year than yeah. I had the entire time, and. Um, it was very difficult, but I learned that I have other outlets of people. I have my parents, I have my, you know, other friends, and it just, um, it's just, uh, it was yeah. an unfortunate thing, Yeah. and that's life, <clears throat> but, um, you know, like, like my friend, um, my other friend that passed away, Yeah. that um, was my elementary school bully. And ended up passing away in high school. It's just, uh, you don't think that bullying uh, gets that far, you know? Because um, because he was a bully in elementary school, and in high school, everyone turned their back on him. And uh, I think he realized the severity of that, and um, it's just unfortunate how um, bullying can lead to death. And that's something that, you know, should never, ever even. And you, occur. And, yeah, you've been around that. Yeah. And, um, and you've seen both sides. Yeah. Um, I want to, I want to talk about that for a second is that that's the severity of what long-term bullying, intimidation, aggression can do to, uh, young minds yeah. and even older minds is that if, if nobody does stand up and find their voice and find their strength and yeah. find their support group, yeah. that can be the end result and that's never the right answer yeah you almost did it in grade eight yeah you know um my youngest daughter just graduated grade eight the thought of her being in that position would be devastating thank god your parents came home yeah. and said dinner yeah yeah you dinner you, you said you'll never forget that that yeah. was a life changer for you literally made me, made me snap out of it realizing that you know um as long as i even have one person that loves me that's all that matters because I know a lot of kids slip into depression because they feel like they're not loved and they're being bullied at school. And but just always remember that you know whether it's your school counselor or whether it's your own teacher, there is always someone that is there for you. And there truly is. Yeah, always. You are never alone. You know. Looking back on your experience, we've got about two minutes left. Uh, three. Um, if you looking back on your experience, Jess, and you're going to have an opportunity to share your story mm -hmm. with the world through our platform, and we're really proud of you to do that. Um, you know, you, you were closed up for a while. You, yeah. you didn't speak to people. You kind of just sheltered yourself. If you knew then what you know now, having said that, what would you tell kids today who are going through something similar because of, um, for you, it was your notes. Yeah. Uh, for anybody else going through anything similar, what would you say? I would just say that um, just hold on because you're, you're almost there, you know, and... Um, just wait because once you get there, it's awesome. You know, once you get once you get out of school and, and you're an adult and you can do what you want with your life and be around the people that you want, you realize that I look back on high school now and I, you know, it's like why why did I let myself get so upset and so wound up and so depressed? It's because, you know, it's now that I'm out of there, like I have a boyfriend who loves me, I have a family who loves me, I have friends who love me, and it's that's what I live for. It's wonderful. And it's just um just always remind yourself that, you know, you're always going to run into people that you don't like, that pe that don't like you. But at the end of the day, all you have to love is yourself. I love that. 
And um, one last thing I want to ask you about, and I think uh, what I want the kids out there who are watching this, and even the parents and coaches and teachers to hear this, is that you talked about a young girl on your soccer team when you were playing sports to try to release some of your anger yeah. and aggression. And even the girls on the team were picking on you. You yeah. talked about a young girl that, you know, took you on and, yeah. and, 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 and became your friend. Can you talk about that? Um, that was pretty much... Uh, after I was, it's while I was going to therapy, I just wanted to get something to take my physical yeah. rage out on. And uh, the, the girls on my soccer team didn't really make it easy for me. And um, my one friend who, uh, she was the only reason why I went to soccer was because I knew that she was going to be there and that I was going to be safe and that I had a friend. And if somebody was doing something to me, I knew that my friend was going to be there for me and awesome. that I wasn't alone. And she's still my friend today and she'll always be my friend. And she just made that part of my life that much better for me. So I think we need to challenge the kids out there watching this to step up and be that friend for the young boy or young girl um, who is isolated and kind of pushed to the outside, right? Um, I'm so amazed with your courage, your strength. I'm so happy that you're uh, able to share your story with us. Um, and uh, I can't wait for you to get in front of um, some kids and share your story in a deeper way. Yeah. And uh, this video, um, we're going to be sending it to everybody we know uh, and then some. And um, Jess, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Um, you. you are loved. And uh, you're going to be a big part of our team, our movement. Um, and we're just so, so proud of you. Thank so you. thank you. And um, so so that's a wrap, everybody. And I want everybody to really watch this video of Jess. I want you to listen to it because this poor girl um, had um, um, a, a tumor, a non-cancerous tumor <laughs> in her nose. She was bullied. And uh, our message again is we're all the same color in the dark. We need to be friends with good people regardless of what they look like, this, the color of their skin, how they dress their hair, their style, their music. We challenge you to break the cycle, be better than that, and be the person that you want to be in this world and just be good to one each other, or to each other, sorry. So thanks again, Jess, and uh, we'll see you really soon. Bye for now.